Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I will be commentating on a round I played at the YMCA at the Pines um, entitled How to Score Reasonably When Your Driver and Putter Have Deserted You. Now, I should state before we go on that when I say driver, I'm basically talking about all my tee shots. I really struggled with my lines off tee boxes on this day and also with uh, my tempo and clearing my hips. Just everything was a little bit out of sync. As you can see from this opening tee shot, I'm looking to go straight down the middle here and just come over it a little bit and, and hit it left. It wasn't terrible. I'm just in the left rough and I didn't think much of it at the time. Um, you know, I'm looking at this approach about 155 to the pin um, just hitting a solid 7-iron. It's back into the wind a little bit and elevated greens. But even this, you can see I've stepped back pretty quick. I was off balance. Felt like I really got away with one there. Didn't hit it super solid, uh, but was on a great line. And like I said, felt like I really got away with one there. So here I am getting ready to putt back down the hill for birdie. Looking like about 20, 20 feet uh, down the hill. I've got this breaking right to left, and I've got it about four to five inches outside the right. And as soon as I hit it, I knew that first of all, it didn't have enough speed on the line that I'd picked, and also that it didn't break as much in the middle part, like the early on part of the putt as I thought. Uh, so when I've hit this, as you can see at the end here, it does start to drift towards the hole, but good good lag putt. So my pace uh, and line, I would give probably 8.5 out of 10 there. Pretty happy. And nothing seemed out of the ordinary. And then on to hole number two. Got driver in hand, just trying to hit a little baby draw off the left corner of the fairway bunker down there. And this one, I'm not really too sure what happened. Yeah, a little off balance again. The uh, right foot came backwards and just kind of snap hooked a little one into the trees. So here I'm just taking my medicine, okay? There's no three wood bullet under that limb and get myself down there to within about 80 to 60 yards, something like that. This is a six iron short enough to not go in that fairway bunker down there and just trying to hit a little punch out and hit this beautifully i was so happy with this shot just took the medicine left for myself i think this was about 145 uh maybe 142 to the pin um didn't hit this solid on a good line, just didn't hit it solid. And there was a bit of wind up there, but yeah, this came up quite a bit short. I'm on the green, cleared the water, but as you see, yeah, 128 yards on that graphic. This was just like a, a nine iron that just kind of bloomed up and started coming back towards me, it felt like. And this is a 30, 30 footer. Um, some real strange breaks in, in in putts on this green so this is just all about pace and feel i'm um, going through the pre-shot routine with my putter i'm um, just trying to lag this to within kind of a dustbin lid as my dad used to say get it within tap in gimme distance and get out of here with a par and, and on to the next so that's kind of what i'm thinking about here i'm always in the back of my head thinking let's get the pace and the line correct and it's always got a chance um, but I'm not trying to force this. I don't want a four footer coming back. I don't want to leave it four feet short. And with all that thinking, left it about three feet short. So yeah, on the first green, felt like I had the speed pretty decent, but that was a downhill putt. This one was a lot flatter and came up three feet short. So I've kind of made a note of that um, again, I'm going to go through the full routine and head down, wait for the sound and made my par and onto hole three, the par three. So this was playing 172. 
Left for me is dead on this hole, especially with the flag being cut on the left, short siding yourself in one of those bunkers. It's just got bogey double written all over it. So I do my usual thing and just not commit at all to any shot and just hit it out there to the right, um, down in that little gully there. The distance was good, um, about pin high. It's a pretty easy chip. One I would expect to get up and down maybe four out of five times. Just pick your spot on the green here, maybe about a foot onto it. Uh, it is going to run a little bit to the left, so play for that. This is a 56 degree wedge back in the stance. Try to take a little bit of spin off it, just want to pop it and give myself my best chance of, of making a putt grab my par and get out of dodge. The idea here, I mean, the title of this video is, you know, how to score reasonably when your putter deserts you and your driver deserts you. It's pretty simple. Just don't have back-to-back -back bad shots. If you just, if you plan your way around, you can have wayward tee shots, but as long as your next shot after that wayward tee shot doesn't penalize you even more, you're gonna score okay. So this was a really good chip and I've left myself about three feet, did not go through the routine and didn't even touch the hole. So now I'm a little frustrated, just made a bogey. And as you can see from that practice swing on the tee box on hole four, no plan here, just gonna let out some frustration by trying to hit it as hard as I can, but don't clear my hips don't really get a full rotation and just smash it out to the right. Now at this point, I know it's over the first bunker. I just don't know if it cleared the second, which it didn't. So now I'm refocused. I've hit two bad shots back to back, the putt on number three and then the drive on this hole. So I'm consciously here taking my time. I'm far enough back from the lip where as long as I pick a six, seven, eight iron, I'm absolutely fine. I'm not picking a four iron to get myself an extra 30 yards, 40 yards of distance. There's no point. So this is a six iron, aim out to the bunkers, the fairway bunkers on the right, solid stroke, choke down just a little bit and just power through it. And was really happy with this. Squirted a little bit right, um, but it was exactly what I needed to do from the situation that I was in and left myself this, which I think was about 130 to the flag, maybe 133, something like that. Um, so I've got a nine iron here and just, I hit this so good. Uh, it looked like it was on a really good line. It was just about six, seven yards too far. Uh, so here I got a putt back down the hill but I'm safely on the green, you know, after a poor tee shot, hit a really good second, and then, let's be honest, you know, a good third, I'm happy with where I am here. I'm on the green in three, I'm dry, uh, I'm not in the water, I'm not in the bunker. So here I'm just looking to get my two putt, get out of here with a par, steady the ship, and, and move on to the next hole, basically. So this, just lag it down there. Again, was never really threatening the hole, was never really online, the pace wasn't great, and now I've left myself another one of these three footers, and just jam it in there. So here, hole five, um, this was playing about 166, I think. So here I've actually gone with a six iron, the wind, uh, the wind had just turned a little bit and was back into me. And as soon as I've hit this, I thought it was good. And then it just started to drift to the left side of the green and went a bit further than I thought, actually. It didn't really take a lot off it. Um, so here, just trickled into the fringe. Uh, it was probably a foot away from being all the way down the hill. So this one, just kind of picking a line, going through the routine and this one can get away from you a little bit, just coming off the corner of that shoulder uh, that runs through the green there, but that was a good putt. That was stress-free. I think halfway during that putt, it looked like it could go either way, like it could go in. 
um, but didn't. Simple par onto number six. So here I'm really thinking about just pounding one right between the two bunkers. And never really got set. Nearly missed the ball. Caught it right on the toe, nice and high, almost a little sky mark. And hit it 160 yards back onto number five tee box. So loving this round so far. Can't hit a tee shot. Um, but here I've got a gap. I'm just aiming at that bunker that's on the green side and hoping I've picked the right club to be short of it, uh, which I did. It was a little eight iron, a little punchy one and was glad that it never skipped again. It was, like I said, you can see from here, it was just about three feet short of the bunker. So I've left myself another chip and putt for par. This one's a little bit flatter. There is water behind the flag that obviously you guys can't see. Um, so everything does run a little bit downhill from here. So I'm just trying to land this. I missed my landing spot by about six inches and left myself three feet short. Seems to be a common theme during this video. Um, but yeah, I'm trying not to think about hole number three right now as I walk up to this. This is a slimy putt, a little bit downhill. It's dead straight. But I'm trying with all my might not to think about hole three. So here I'm being a little bit extra careful in my line. Use I always use the golf ball, the line on the golf ball uh, to help me with my putts. Um, so here I am. I'm really going through the routine here. This is a big putt. It's probably more like four feet as I look at this actually. So we're going to go through the whole routine. Understanding this is an important one to keep the round kind of steady the ship and knock it in. So I was well happy with that. Here on number seven, I remember having no plan whatsoever. I couldn't decide to hit a fade or a draw. So in the end, aimed at the bunker, but didn't commit to anything and just smash one out right. It's over the bunkers towards number four fairway. So a little bit all over the place. Uh, the flag here is cut just to the left of that big tree, um, far enough back. I think this was a seven iron or an eight iron, uh, about 155, something like that. And I just never compressed the ball on this one. Just never got through it. Um, got a little bit quick opening that time uh, with my hips and just left it in this spot. So here I am again, chipping and putting. Uh, just again, just going through the same thing, just trying to pick a spot on the green and execute a good shot. So that was well happy with that. Got it to within about three, three and a half feet. Uh, giving myself a chance. I'm not trying to get cute and hit flops and stop it right there. I know what these greens do. I can read the break. Um, so then all you've got to do is pick a club that you'll know will run out the desired amount and just try and execute that that target landing zone. And if you do that, you'll you'll start to shave strokes off your scores. So here I'm gonna go through the routine again. This is a must make. Uh, really steady the ship if I can just knock this in, get off with another par, and did so. So really happy there. So the again, the key point in this video is don't put back to back bad swings together. Those are your round killers. Those are where you're going to go on bogey trains that you do not want to be on. This one, this drive right here, again, smashes into the car path. I think that 286 yards was probably total on this one. Uh, yeah, so I've got the flag is directly behind this tree. And that tree is about 20 yards in front of me and about double the height of what you see on screen. So this is a 60 degree wedge open the face and just try to hit it as hard as I can, could really. And was really happy to find the green. Left myself a 25 footer, uh, typical kind of theme of the day. Um, but again, I'm in full scramble mode here. This is how to salvage a round and score reasonably. You have to follow up bad misses with good shots. And that can also mean good misses like picking the right areas to miss and get up and down. So again, this round's been a little bit different, but again, with this putt, just never really had it on the line, never really had the pace 
Um, didn't really threaten the hole at all during this round. It was just a struggle. But as you can see from the top uh, right-hand side of the screen, still one over par. Not too shabby. There's a lot of holes out here where it could have been easily three or four over by now. And this was the best drive of my day, my last hole of the day. Did my usual, open the face and just try to hit a baby draw off the corner, off the right-hand corner of that bunker and just hit it perfect. So here I've got, I think, 162 to the flag. So this is my seven iron. And it's probably the best iron shot I hit of the day. Still tugged it a little bit left of my line, but it cut in a little bit thanks to the wind. Um, and ended up about eight yards short of the of the flag. So yeah, I was really happy with that. Got this, what's that, about 18, 15, 18 feet. A uh, little downhill, little bit left to right, maybe about a ball. Uh, but never really got this started on the right line. And pace, like it had been all day, wasn't great. But that's a pretty stress-free par. And okay, so I played nine holes, one over par. Drove the ball pretty poor, to be honest, except for that last hole. But what I did do is after every bad shot or every bad tee shot, recovered with an above average or good recovery shot. Take your medicine, understand what's in your arsenal, what you're capable of doing, and get yourself back into position. Guys, if you can keep away the back-to-back -back bad shots, you keep double bogeys off your card. You keep, you shave a lot of bogeys off your card and turn those bogeys into pars. Just by refocusing, going through your process, going through your pre-shot routines, and just having the mindset that a bad shot needs to be followed by a good one. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We will see you next time.